Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, everyone. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm your friend as we journey to take health back, your health back, I should say. We are coming to you live from downtown Honolulu from the Think Tech studios of Hawaii. Today, our topic of discussion will be on helping Hawaii tower up. What does that mean? Well, I've come across a system, and I met a young man who's really actively promoting it here in Hawaii. The Tower Gardens is simply growing aeroponically and vertically, so that means we're using airspace, I believe, isn't it, three diameter, uh, three diameter feet of space, and we can grow up 11 feet high. So we have a good friend here that will share a little bit more about it. Uh, what I would like you all to take away from today's discussion is the idea that the Tower Gardens offer one of many solutions to growing sustainable, nutrient-dense food locally here in Hawaii. Today we are very honored to welcome Derek Chand. He is the managing partner of Towered Up, a Honolulu-based company that provides comprehensive support to tower gardeners in Hawaii and around the country by providing nutrient, oh excuse me, by providing maintenance services and plant seedling that he'll grow and service you with. He'll deliver it to you or you can come pick it up from his facility. And uh, I'm just very excited to share with Hawaii, Derek Chan. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Derek. Sure, well thanks for having me, Wendy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was born, in, born and raised in San Francisco, uh, went to college at UC Berkeley where I studied uh, biology, thinking maybe I'd go to medical school, uh, but realized after the four years that medical school just wasn't for me. So I did stay in healthcare, and I've been working in uh, healthcare administration for the for the past seven years, and uh, got a job opportunity to move to Hawaii, and so I, I jumped on it and uh, moved here. And about, here you are. And here I am, right. a year and a half, you know, later, and uh, learned to surf and and just. Loving life out here. Well, and you know, by the looks of it, I know you're still involved radically with healthcare and taking your health back. And that's why you're learning more and understanding and promoting the Tower Gardens. Because as I understand, you're going to be growing and teaching us here in Hawaii how to grow our food. And I believe that this is like a solution to some of the problems here in Hawaii and as well as around the world. So let me just ask you, how did you get involved with Tower Gardens? Uh, so I was fortunate when I moved here. I was introduced by a local, uh, by a, a friend to you, and you know you took me in like a son. And so I'm always grateful for that. And uh, the very first time I met you, you invited me to your home, and I came and I saw the tower gardens, and then that's where I first learned uh, about the tower gardens. I saw it, and I was you know quite blown away. Wow. And you know you're 32 years old, right? Yes. And so I'm so excited because when I did when I met you and you had such passion for wanting to be healthy and you did the right steps of uh, of making the right health choices and then you got excited about growing plants and growing sustainable plants here in Hawaii and wanting to share it with the rest of us. I was so excited. So we know what the tower garden is. Yes. Share with the rest of Hawaii. What is a tower garden? Yeah, sure. So if we can bring up a slide Next slide here. Um, the Tower Garden is a vertical aeroponic growing system uh, that has no dirt, requires 90% less water, 90% less space, as you mentioned before, it grows in a three foot diameter space, <coughs> and a 100% success rate, meaning anyone can grow, uh, including people that have a black thumb. So, <laughs> so it's, it's foolproof. Oh, okay, so, and I can prove that, guys, because I've had a Tower Garden on my lanai and I am growing food that I consume daily, and um, I grow nothing. And so some of you may have known that I owned a chocolate factory in the past, my past life. So the only brown stuff between my nails was chocolate. And it's still the only brown things between my nails because the tar garden has no dirt. And so that's the exciting part about it. So tell us, Derek, how does the tar garden work? Sure. So if we bring up the slide, there's a, we have a diagram that sh shows how it works. So basically, you've got uh, the pump that sits at uh, the bottom of the reservoir, which holds uh, 20 gallons of water and uh, proprietary uh, nutrient solution, which is all um, land and sea minerals. And so the water is pumped to the top of the tower, and it drips down onto the root systems of all the plants there uh, on the tower. Wow, that's amazing. And you know, everyone says, oh, it takes electricity. I said, yes, it does. And you know, especially the pakes, right, the Chinese, they say, oh, that costs a lot of money. I said, you know what, I put a meter to my tower just to satisfy the numbers. 
And when I did meter it out, because it's on every 15 minutes or every hour, it's on 15 minutes and 45 minutes it's off, it consumes about $2 and let's say $2.60 of electricity per month. So I think I'm worth $2.60 per month of electricity. So I'm, I'm all for it and I want others to know that it is it does make a lot of sense. Yes. So there, what can we grow on the tower garden? Well, you can pretty much grow anything on the tower garden. Um, if you look at the, this slide here, uh, you can grow anything from uh, herbs, such as basil, cilantro, dill, mint, parsley, uh, all kinds of greens, arugula, chard, kale, lettuces, uh, and then even uh, fruiting crops, such as cucumbers, green beans, tomatoes, zucchini, and, and eggplant. So, I mean, I still go to the open markets, and I still go to the supermarkets, but there are a few things, I mean, especially I'm a kale lady, and everybody knows Wendy Lowe, if you see her with a green drink in, your, in her hand, she's gonna give you or make you drink a kale smoothie. But you know, everyone's like, kale, I don't do kale. But after I give them my smoothies, because I have bananas in there, extra virgin coconut oil, a splice of cinnamon, and all this great stuff in there. So everybody is turned on to kale smoothies. So I've been drinking kale smoothies for the last six and a half years, and I have never in the last six and a half years bought kale. And that's because I am producing my own kale. And on, on the next slide, I wanted to share with you, I, I, I saw it in advance. Yeah, we've got, we've got a picture just for you, Wendy. I know you love kale, so th this, next one, this next slide is for you. Right. I call it the supersized kale. So obviously you can grow all different kinds of plants, but hey, if you're, you're, you're a kale lover and you wanna grow, grow just kale, well, there you have it. Yes, I understand that that kale plant belonged to one of your friends. And I guess she's a single mom with one child, and they just could not keep up yes. the consumption of their kale that she was producing. Yeah. But that's an amazing, I mean, from a Chinese point of view, that's cha-ching, cha-ching, because yes. that's a lot of great calcium and protein that she could either sell or give away to her friends and neighbors. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also, the quality of the produce grown on the tower is, is better than anything you're going to find in the supermarket because it's fresh, picked straight from your tower. Um, I've had customers tell me that they... They don't like kale. They never liked kale before this, but when they started growing it um, themselves and eating it, now they love it. Yeah, that's the amazing part because you can actually see it grow. I mean, I remember when I first got my tower and my little seedlings started sprouting, I actually felt like I was a grandmother. For the first time I felt, I'm a grandma! I was so excited because I grow nothing. And when those seedlings started sprouting, I felt so excited and happy and it's never stopped. And that's the other thing is, you know, some friends, they have bought towers and um, they lost interest. I don't know, do, they, do you lose interest in health and feeling great? I don't, so I'll never stop growing. And I know that's why we're gonna start talking a little bit about more of that, the maintenance and the management of seedlings and your towers, even if you don't have time to go ahead and do that. But, um, you know, I just wanted to ask you another question. Sure. How does growing in a tower vertically how does that compare to growing in the soil? Well, when you're uh, growing in the tower, uh, the nutrients are delivered directly to the root system. So it actually, um, if you take a look at the next slide, it, it shows the progression um, of how quickly the plants actually grow each week. So you can see um, really in, in three weeks, you can already have edible uh, produce. Um, and again, because it, it's being watered 24 times a day, Right, the pump is go, uh, is on 15 minutes off, 45 minutes off. So every hour, it's it's being run, and the nutrients are delivered to the the plants. So they grow about 30 percent quicker than um, if you were to grow in soil. Wow. Okay. Can we see that slide one more time? Because I was kind of amazed. I'm still looking at it. So that you're saying to me on that first week on the top left corner, those are like two week old seedlings. Yes. And then you put them in your tower. And then the first week after it's been in the tower, it looks like that already. Yes. So you see that much growth. In, so that's actually the third week after putting the seed into the rock wool medium. Correct. And then on the second week in the tower, it looks like that. And then on the third week, you actually can consume it. Yes. Wow. So, you know, I thought, I think that is brilliant because you can actually see it grow. And, you know, um, when I was with the uh, Easter Seals program, I remember we brought this to those kids at the Easter Seals, the adults and the children. And they were amazed because they never, I mean, a lot of our kids there were on wheelchairs and um, you know they had special needs. But when we taught them how to drop the seed in the little cubes 
and it started sprouting. They felt like I did, but of course they're kids, so they didn't say I'm a grandkid. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they saw the, the, it growing, and then actually they invited Auntie Wendy on Earth Day to come by and just eat what they grew. And you know, I was so amazed because they were so excited. I couldn't believe how excited a child would be about growing lettuce and then having me eat it, but it's what they produced. Right. And so the neatest part about that experience for me is not only did they produce it, cut it, and put it in a bowl, they made some dressing and they put it on there for me, but they also, when I turned to the back, they were also eating it. And I was very amazed because if you grow it, you eat it. Yeah. And that's the, I mean, is that not one of a difficult task around the dinner table? Is getting mm. kids to love spinach and salads. I mean, and we're talking without dressing. So yeah, we can put salad dressings on it, you know, all that great tasting stuff. So they're basically eating the dressing. And the salad is a byproduct of the dressing. Right. So how exciting it is that they can and they, you know, uh, love or grow up, they can grow up loving and enjoying the nutrient dense produce that they can produce right there at home. I just think that's just amazing. I agree. Yeah. So, you know, where can you grow a tower garden, Derek? I think the question is, where can't you grow a tower garden? <laughs> um, so I have uh, um, some pictures of uh, the tower garden being grown in a variety of different locations. So all around Hawaii, right? So in, in Makiki, and I, I believe that's uh, your lanai there. Yes. And I, I can see all kinds of plants and, and your kale in the background there. Uh, it can grow on the east side in Kaneohe where it gets uh, rainy and wet. Hawaii Kai, Makaha on the west side where it can get you know pretty hot. So. Uh, the tower garden is ideal for really any location. Wow, that's amazing. Um, you know, so you're saying hot, cold, wet, dry. Yes. Pretty much it can grow wherever you need it to grow. Can it grow indoors? Glad you asked that question. <laughs> uh, it can grow indoors, and I have some pictures of um, tower gardens being grown indoors. And we just, uh, the Tower Garden uh, company actually just came out with these new LED grow lights. And as you can see from the, the pictures, um, plants can grow pretty big with the grow lights. And, and they're adjustable. So let's say you had a tomato plant or, or an eggplant um, at the bottom, you can move it so that they're still getting uh, the LED lights. Wow, that's incredible. And you know, actually, I did, uh, I did see that on Facebook. I think uh, this gal lived in Saskatchewan in the north of Canada, and I believe they're farmers, wheat farmers. And so in the dead of the winter, she, well, all the, I mean, they have food, of course, and they have the meats and all of that. But as far as vegetation, I know that they always said they had potatoes, onions, carrots, all the hearty crops is what they ate. But you know, within the last three and four years, she's been eating salads in the dead of winter. And you know where she grows it? Where? In her basement. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So you, you know, I mean, that, so I like, I, I, so I saw a photo of it. It was the tower garden with the lights. And I asked her, isn't it cold? Isn't it too cold to grow warm, warm cropped um, vegetation? And she says, you just need to put a warmer into the base and it warms up the water. It sends warm water up to the roots of the, of the plants. And in the, the basement with the grow lights, she's got lettuce pretty much all year round. Wow, that's amazing. So there you have it. There's really no excuse. I mean, winter, summer, uh, on Hawaii and Saskatchewan, um, you can grow your own food anywhere. Yeah, I just think, and, and then of course, we need it most here in Hawaii. Yes. Here, I know like Puerto Rico, all the different island countries, island states, we need it so badly. And um, that's what excited me when I learned about it and I understood it and that I could do it. You know, that if nobody else wanted to be along with me, I could start a little healthy revolution. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I got excited about it. And now you're here and there's a bunch of us here in Hawaii that have tower gardens. But I think we have a different goal now for Hawaii and its future. So what are the goals? for tower gardens here in Hawaii. Yeah, so we definitely want to keep encouraging um, individuals to have tower gardens in their own homes, but we also want to expand into public spaces and commercially so that the public can, can see the tower gardens and what they are. Um, and, you know, they really can be grown on a mass scale. So uh, I've got a slide here of, of um, some tower gardens at Iolani School, for example. Um, and it's a great, T 
teaching tool to teach the kids, um, you know, about nutrition and health, and um, and even taking it to the marketplace where they get a little taste of entrepreneurship as well. Wow. You know, we're going to take a little quick break right now, and then we'll come back and see what they do as far as making it a business. So thank you, Derek. We're going for a 60-second break, and we'll be right back with more great information. Aloha, I want to invite all of you to Talk Story with John Wahei every other Monday here at Think Tech Hawaii. And we have special guests like Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii who joins us from time to time to talk about the political happenings in this state. Please join us every other Monday. Aloha. So welcome back, and we're so excited. I know that before the break, we talked about the tar gardens, how simple it is that me, the chocolate maker, can actually grow food on my balcony. Uh, we met Derek Chan, from, uh, or he, who is a managing partner of Towered Up, and uh, he were telling us how it worked, what can we grow, what can't we grow, which is very small compared to what we can grow, right. um, that you can grow in the dead of winter in a basement, you can grow on balconies, you can grow in hot towns and cities like Makaha and Eva in Mesa, Arizona with our buddy Troy. I'm just so amazed. I mean, the more I talk about it, the more I learn about it, I'm like, so before the break, I did ask you, what are some of the goals with the Tower Gardens here in Hawaii? And we did talk a little bit about the Tower Gardens in Iolani School. Yes. Okay, so, so tell us more about that. Yeah, so like I was saying before the break, um, it's it's a great uh, teaching tool, particularly for students, because they can plant their own seeds, watch it grow, harvest it, um, and it's it's just a it's a more visceral experience for them to be able to uh, grow their own food and then cook with it or or take it to the marketplace and um, sell it and learn a little bit about business and entrepreneurship. So, um, and I, I think Wendy, you're good friend, good friends with a man uh, by the name of Stephen Ritz, who's uh, a <laughs> top ten, uh, previous top ten, top teachers in the world, in the world. that uh, teaches in the Bronx, and he's right. done amazing things with um, with the Tower Gardens. Maybe you want to talk a little about yeah, that. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm so glad. I love Stephen Ritz. She said, "Wendy, it's like Imua. It's the same thing. What he his passion for the Tower Garden and what he does with his curriculum." Uh, for his kids. He teaches in the Bronx, in the south side of the Bronx, in New York City, and he has developed programs after programs with his kids. And his children actually think and know and feel that Stephen Ritz loves them. And he loves them because they're so excited about growing and learning. And so the more that happens, the more interaction, he becomes more excited. They become more excited about wanting to be at school. So it's a total success. I mean, he has created the Bronx, in fact, a company called the Green Bronx Machine. He has created that and is just propelling his energy around the world. He's come to Hawaii. He's gone to many different states, different countries right now today. I believe he's in Dubai, where they're formulating towns, um, indoor towns, no vehicles, just bicycles, um, building and uh, erecting these communities that are all teaching them to take health back. So just walking, cycling, eating produce that they're producing right there in their communities and letting them all get excited about that quality of life. So yes, and we're gonna try and bring Stephen Ritz back because he loves Hawaii and next time there you go and teach him how to surf. Oh yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, and so you know, back to Iolani School, they're very blessed because they have a sustainability director who is able to coach the students on different forms of growing. And every form is good, I must say. As long as it works for you and your opportunity, you know, there's hydroponics, aquaponics, farming, there's aeroponics, vertical growing. So every system works as long as you allow it to work with you and for you. 
It's just that we're very passionate about the amount of space that it doesn't use because you mentioned it uses 90% less land. Right. Right? right. And how high can it go, Derek? Uh, 11 feet tall. Wow, that's amazing. Yes. You know, and we also want to be very aware of some of the situations here in Hawaii. You know, um, sometimes the best quality of food, only the people of, uh, that can afford this level of food can have reach to it. So I understand that in other states and even here in Hawaii, we want to create more of a, a affordable means of food for some of the homeless on Correct. the street. So tell us a bit of a, a project that you know about. Yeah, so there's a homeless shelter in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. um, which is pictured here. And so as you can see, you can put up as many towers as you can fit on that, uh, on that space. Um, there's no limit to, to how much you can grow. And, and again, this is turning unused space into something productive. So in this case, they're producing food for uh, all the residents here at the homeless shelter. Wow. And you know, that's amazing because I do, I do a lot of work with the River of Life Mission, and we service, I want to say, up to 20,000 meals per month. Our food is very graciously donated to us. But how amazing is it that we could be more self-sustainable yes. within a shelter? And so that seems to me like when we were, I saw the picture, I, I counted about 30 tower gardens there. Yes. And that's on a rooftop. Yep. And so how amazing is that? So who do you think would be managing all of that there on the rooftop? Well, um, I formed a company uh, just for those particular cases where uh, it's called Towered Up. Mm -hmm. And so we can come and set up towers uh, for you, whether it's individuals or in a commercial space um, like that, uh, that homeless shelter. And then we can provide maintenance services uh, to ensure that um, it's successful, the, the, the project's successful and you're growing the produce uh, correctly. And um, so really my company is to, to fill in the gaps because as simple as a system it is to use, it still does require some time um, to maintain. And so that's where we come in to, to fill that gap, to give people the peace of mind that, you know, when I purchase a tower garden, it's going to be successful. Right. And, you know, I think that's key because a lot of facilities, schools, you know, they're always on a tight budget. And so the budget means I don't have the staff to maintain plants and to check the plants. And somebody like you with your company, I know that you love your plants because you're like looking at them and they're at eye view because you're not going to the ground. They're right vertically in the air so you can look to see, do you have any pests? Do you have any visitors that you don't want? So I think having somebody like you to maintain and manage it and love it, I think is so key. And it allows the facilities to do what they do best, taking care of the people of the street and taking and helping them to be more and your specialty will be loving and taking care of the plants that will help them take care of their bodies. Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. Wow. Yeah, and I want to add another thing too. Um, aside from feeding lots of people, uh, anyone that, you know, so if an organization like a nonprofit wants to purchase, you know, multiple tower gardens, it's also income generating as well. So they can sell to, sell at the marketplace, uh, restaurants, so really, it, it's, it's one option for uh, nonprofits to be self-sustainable. Self wow. You know, you just handed me a sheet, and um, it looks very profitable to me. Um, but aside from that, it's going to get you healthier. So what does that mean? I mean, the price of health versus making money. But how about having the best quality of food and income generating at the same time as allowing it to be a vocational training center, whether it be for the school or for the homeless shelter? I mean, say I was a homeless woman and I did love gardening. You would give me the opportunity to go up there and help you to manage that. And I would take pride in that. And that pride is basically what I need in myself to possibly get me off of the street and back into the regular you know, circulation of life. So I see so many values to all of this. You know, and then again, the sheet that you gave me, I mean, in a matter of what is it? You said 3,000 square feet of land. You can produce 150 towers with 44 plants per tower. Correct. So that's like that's over 6,000 heads of lettuce that you could produce to feed the people down there. And if they couldn't eat it all, then you could actually sell it as an eternal fundraiser. Correct. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. So out of the 6,000 heads, you consume downstairs like 4,000 heads. You would have 2,000 heads of lettuce. And even if you sold it at $2 a head, that's $4,000. Oh, yeah. 
what shelter or nonprofit would not welcome $4,000 a month income as they're getting their clients and their staff healthier? Right. It's a win-win. Yes. You're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't wow. thank me, but uh... yeah. Well, Tim Blank, the designer <laughs> of the Tower Gardens, you're a genius, yeah. and we just love what he's created and the passion that he has beside uh, behind it to continue to promote it, not only here in Hawaii in the United States as well as the world. He's wanting to share it with everyone, and so you also just got back from a trip. Where were you? You went to another school or more yeah, learning? Yes. So uh, I came. I just came back from. Um, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. where we helped uh, a client who had purchased a, a tower farm instead of 10 towers uh, in his home. And he's an architect and he builds dome homes. And so uh, he wanted to set up the towers in his home to see how they worked. Uh, and then his goal is eventually to put the tower gardens in these dome homes um, where it's going to house uh, homeless people and um, getting them back on their feet and giving them vocational skills. So again, the tower garden has so many possibilities. It's endless. You just have to be creative and, and use your imagination. Wow. So this gentleman, um, another philanthropist at its best, not only taking care of the people and bringing them shelter, but teaching them how to fish. Yes. And so that is so key because, yes, I'll give you a place to stay, but we got to get some responsibility going on here. And so by learning and teaching them what they can grow so they can consume, again, they can market and up the quality of lives for themselves. That's, again, genius. Right. Wow. And uh, I also, I think you were out at UCLA as well? Yes, that's right. I was also yeah. at UCLA, and I have a picture here. Um, so uh, the folks over at LA Urban Farms, they set up these uh, 44 towers at the UCLA campus rooftop. So uh, as you can see in the picture, which we've emphasized, it doesn't require a lot of space. I mean, there's 44 towers in that little space, and it's otherwise wouldn't have been used. But now... Um, they're able to produce almost 2,000 um, plants to, to feed the students in the cafeteria, which is right behind where the, the towers are. Wow. So University of Hawaii, I know you're right behind them. KCC, let's go. Because the UCLA is producing food on the rooftop, which was kind of dead space. And now they're producing about almost 2,000 heads of lettuce that the students can consume so that they can have more brain food so they can produce better students and reflect better on their university. That's right. Genius. Oh, yeah. I tell you, see, you must be eating a lot of the stuff you grow because you're a genius, too. Yeah, well, uh, since since I got a tower garden, you know, that I've, I've noticed myself uh, becoming smarter and coming up with, with, with ideas, so. Wow. Okay, and I know, um, I know you wanted to bring some seedlings and some plants into this studio, but we're on a green screen, so the green plant wouldn't be green, but I know you have a slide. Yes. And it shows us what the babies look like, the little seedlings. Right. So again, for, for people that uh, don't have the time or the expertise to start their own seedlings, uh, our company, Towered Up, grows and supplies uh, seedlings for, for all of Hawaii. So we can ship to all islands and then obviously here on Oahu. And um, all you have to do is come by, take the seedlings, Put it in, put it in your tower, and then watch it grow. So we do, we do all the hard work for you. Well, imagine, did you hear that? This 32-year-old young man said, "We'll do all the hard work for you." That's rare and up and beyond. But I love it when you, the, I mean, you're not a millennial, so you're one step out of being a millennial, has that desire to work hard, and and just continue to share this knowledge and information to teach us, the rest of Hawaii and the world, on the power of a tower garden. So I know that your company is called Towered Up, and I know we have some information here on the screen. And if anybody needs to know more about the Tower Gardens and how they can have one, or if you have a project that you want Derek to work with, he can help you by just going to his website, getting in touch with him, and um, he's going to help you tower it up. And how exciting is that? So thank you so much, Derek. Appreciate you being here. and. Keep the energy. I mean, when you're my age, you're going to still look your age because you're towering it up now. Aloha, everybody from Thank you. Think Tech Hawaii.